Hi, and welcome to Lifestyle Management. We are now in uh, Chapter 15, so Healthy Aging. So whether you're in your teens, your 20s, or older, everyone can take steps that is going to add, add healthy, active, and productive years to your life. At any age and at any stage of your life and at any level of fitness, you can do a great deal to influence the impact on the passage of time that it has on you. So as you age, you can get better no matter what time you start. Now we're going to cover material in this chapter that's going to help us with the decisions that you make and see what it can do in terms of how it helps you with your um, age. And that's what we're going to focus on predominantly in part, in part one. Now in part two, we're going to, t we're going to touch on the sort of um, the risks and the downside of aging and death and dying and how we might help others who are survivors. All right, so in this first part, let's remember that nobody gets out alive. We will all die at some point. So what decisions can we make and what choices can we make now that help extend and be happier and healthier as we do age? And as either uh, we end, as we enter our late adult years, live with purpose and with our future in mind. So let's look at some of the issues. In particular, we're going to start with living in an, in, in an aging society. Now, I say that because, and we'll see this when we look at statistics, our society in Canada is getting older. And it's not to say that there aren't any young people. It's just to say that the boomers and the baby boomers make up the, vars and the large proportion of the population and we'll see in the, um, tr the tri uh, pyramid triangle that I'll show you around population density how that makes sense. So let's look at this, living in an aging society. Some stats for you. According to Stats Canada, there were an estimated 5.7 million Canadians who were 65 years of age or older in 2015. Now that number is not going to get smaller. It's going to continue to grow. By 2024, the estimate for seniors is expected to reach 20.1% of the Canadian population. Women form about 17.4% of the population in Canada and Canadian seniors, and it's estimated that one in four Canadian seniors have um, was born outside of Canada. So throughout our lives, you will confront issues related not only to your age, but also to the aging Canadian population. And some issues that we're going to be dealing with that can include, and that these are the primary three. Now, you'll find lots of other issues that fit within this. Retirement costs is one. Social security taxes and workers may be on workers may be increased over time as that number grow rolls up. So retirement issues and costs, and we'll get into, you know, you'll, you'll hear more about that later. Health costs. Now, that's a biggie. Some experts say that health costs will soar, while others contend that nations with larger elderly populations do not spend more on their national, of their national wealth on health care. The challenge will be on this, and we'll see this coming up in the next item, would be, well, the predominant, the big part, part of the population that is older has a lot of money and has political power. And that's the third point, gray power politics. Senior citizens go to the polls in large numbers compared to the younger population. I would hope that you would try to do differently and take a, a role in your political uh, and, uh, role in society. Therefore, programs for the elderly may make up larger share of the future federal budget. Because they roll out, uh, they, they vote, and because, I shouldn't say they, I would count myself among the baby boomers, because of, you know, because of that number and because of the way that they have income at this point and their savings and their pensions and the ability to spend money on things that they care about, they can influence things like the budgets and how much money is spent on health care. So let's look at successful aging. How do we go about successful aging? Well, Canadians are not, the only, are not only living longer, but we stay healthier and more independent longer. Now, there's a lot of contributing factors to this. Among the factors contributing to longer health span is improved Medicare, medical care, our diet, exercise, and public health uh, advances. All of those are contributing to uh, having a, a older 
you know, living longer lives and living healthier. There are several ways to define aging. There's the chronological age, which is, you know, our birthday age. Whatever your birthday is, is the age you are chronologically. There's functional aging. This is the physical appearance, uh, our mobility, strength, and mental capacity. So when we see somebody of the same age, but one is much more sedentary, maybe not able to move around very well, whereas another one of the same age looks younger, has more mobility, has more strength, more mental capacity, that's their functional age. age. Then there's the physiological age, and this is the normal functioning of our bodies as it occurs as we get older. Now we also have what's known as psychological age. So how do you feel about how old you are? My mom used to say frequently, she doesn't feel her age. She feels younger than she is. And so this was her psychological health. She was happy. She was healthy. Um, that's psychological health. If you feel good about the age you're at. And then uh, we can also look at the social age. Now social ages are coping with the social roles that we find ourselves in. How do you feel about not being a full-time employee, perhaps, in your career choice? How do you feel about the social role of being a grandparent as opposed to being a parent? So in order for us to get to this place of being able to be um, psychologically better aged, functionally in a good age category, and be able to address the social role changes, well, fitness for life. So how in what way can we be fit for life? Well, we're going to ask the bigger question, I guess, is why is physical activity important as we age? I mean, in historically, even in Canada, when people aged, physical fitness wasn't one of the things that was paramount. But you look at today, larger numbers of older Canadians are more physically healthy. It was once thought that aging meant weakness, uh, frailty, and declining uh, strength. Proactive, proactive health-promoting behaviors, such as exercising, contribute to a high quality of life. Even when begun late in life, there are lots of examples of people starting to exercise even in their 70s. And not only starting to exercise, but beginning to run and beginning to do other exercises. And perhaps because they've had less health issues in the past, starting later in life means they're starting from a healthier place than for, than for other people, perhaps. Exercise is so effective in preserving well-being that um, gerontologists sometimes describe it as the closest thing to an anti-aging pill. So the more exercise, the more healthy, and the more longevity we perhaps can expect. So let's look at some of the components. Cardio cardiovascular fitness and aging. As we age, one of the major uh, changes uh, of the cardiovascular system is the decrease of elasticity of the aorta and arteries. With increased stiffness of the aorta and the arteries, there is an increased resistance to accepting the blood volume when the heart pumps. This leads to an increase in systolic blood pressure and a decrease in the lower diastolic pressure and an increase in the pulse pressure. So it could, in, it could um, work your body and your heart in particular much more harder than it ought to. This increased wear and tear on artery walls may lead to a stroke or heart attack in more extreme examples. Regular physical exercise can help keep older adults functioning and be more mobile. Older adults are encouraged to accumulate at least 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous intensity aerobic physical activity per week in bouts of about 10 minutes or more. Now you'll see the, um, the document beside me. It's also in your textbook. To give some idea, you'll find that these are on in, um, if you look at the, um, the top there where it says it's over 65, these are in different age groups. You'll find these online and it gives basic expectations of how to improve fitness for different age groups and what's expected. So let's now look at skeletal muscle, muscle fitness and aging. Now, as you can imagine, as we age, skeletal muscles get both smaller and weaker. Uh, fat tissues replace muscle fiber 
and there's often an increase in fibrosis. Now getting in and out of chairs, going up and down stairs, lifting items, walking, functioning on a daily basis can become much more difficult. The Canadian Physical Activity Guidelines for Older Adults suggests that muscles and bone strengthening activities use major muscle groups be done at least two days a week. Now stronger muscles help to prevent falls and it helps to enhance balance and that certainly you know, you, the balance issues that can create falls which can affect the quality of life for people as they age. A third area we can look at, bone health and aging. And again, this is something you can probably, you've probably heard about it. As we move into our middle and later years, bone mineral loss surpasses bone mineral growth, which results in a deterioration of some bone tissues. Bone becomes fragile, brittle, and porous, and for many adults develop osteoporosis. Women are much more vulnerable to osteoporosis than men. Two million Canadians suffer from osteoporosis, and one in three women and one in five men will suffer from osteoporosis fracture sometime in their lifetime. So its best time for preventative action is early in life. Increase calcium intake, vitamin D consumption, regular physical activity are very important, especially in the first three decades of life. Starting a physical activity program at a young age helps us to build peak bone mass. Physical, physical activity not only improves the strength of bones, but it helps reduce the risks of falls and an increased muscle strength and endurance. Really important as we get older. Now we find today that a lot of people, at least in my age group, have been active way back. I've been a runner since I was about 13, 14 years old. Um, Involved in a lot of physical activities, pursued triathlons, mountain bike racing, uh, uh, Metcon, blue uh, competitions. I've done a lot of things throughout my life, and it's contributing to my feeling healthier at my age. Now, certainly things can turn, and that's why it's important to do what we can early in our life to get into the habits and the routines that enable us to live longer and healthier lives. Another point to consider as we age is flexibility. As our connective tissue becomes stiffer and we lose muscle function, a decreased range of motion can lead to incorrect body alignment and tight muscles. Incorporating stretching exercises into daily life at any age can help. Um, I'm appreciative of that. I'm not a very flexible person and I'm trying to engage in more flexibility exercises. Other activities that improve flexibility can include Tai Chi, yoga, chair stretching, and a variety of other things to consider and worth including. Now, uh, inclusive of all this, nutritional issues in getting uh, for older adults. Many elderly people who live independently do not get adequate amounts of one or more essential nutrients. Now, dietitians they urge elderly to concentrate on eating healthful, healthful foods. Um, also, many also recommend daily nutritional supplements. Among uh, widows, um, uh, widowed seniors, eating disorders are considered to be one of the most troubling problems related to bereavement. Stress, oftentimes for many people, uh, eating becomes the way out and not necessarily eating healthy. And when we think about as we age, does body composition change with age? Well, body weight, body fat percentages typically increase in adulthood. Body composition can affect how well older individuals function. Physical activity can increase and maintain lean body tissue. Okay, we've talked about the body. What about the aging brain? Well, scientists used to think that the aging brain once wore out and could never be fixed. Self-repair does occur more quickly in young brains, but the process does, does continue into older brains. Now that was really sort of um, groundbreaking discovery oh, about 20 years ago, 15 years ago, that uh, brain function and neurons can continue to grow into our 80s and 90s. 
mental ability does not decline along with physical vigor. So you can be physically unable to move around as much, but your brain can be still very active. So let's consider, how do you think young? Well, successful agers bounce back after setbacks and have a can-do attitude about the challenges that they face. Seniors tend to be lifelong learners who take up entirely new hobbies late in life. The best advice for keeping your brain healthy as you age is use it or lose it. Learn new things. Learn a language. Learn an instrument. Um, engage in cognitive activities. Memory. Well, some memory skills inevitably seem to diminish over time. Some normal changes to expect are recalling information. It can take longer. It doesn't mean you won't remember. You might remember it tomorrow. <laughs> Distractions become more disruptive. Access, um, ac accessing names get harder. And uh, learning new information is harder. But wisdom matters. And so practice. Do activities. Be careful now. I'm going to throw a, ca a, a caution in here as we talk about the aging brain. Be careful about um, uh, online brain games that claim neuroplasticity and neuropsychology as the foundation of the work they do. Unless it's been done, and there hasn't been a lot done on this yet, sometimes all those games do is get you better at those games. They don't necessarily improve cognitive function, so be conscious of that. Now, a big area in aging that we hear a lot about is dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Now, let's make sure we're clear about how they're related to one another. Dementia is a syndrome that describes a group of disorders that include a number of symptoms such as memory loss, judgment and reasoning, and changes in mood and behavior. Alzheimer's disease is one of that group of disorders and it causes um, and, and the cause of 50 to 70 percent of dementia cases and 20 to 30 percent are caused by vascular disease. In Canada it's estimated that by 2031 there will be an estimated 674,000 Canadians with dementia. Just, just a little over half a million. Alzheimer's is a progressive deterioration of brain cells and mental capacity. The illness develops gradually, beginning with ordinary memory lapses, and once the, you know, the brain's uh, lost capacity to regenerate elementary body functions, people with Alzheimer's die of malnutrition, dehydration, infection, or heart failure. Women are more likely to develop Alzheimer's than men. Now, there is medication that can control difficult behavioral symptoms and enhance or at least partially restore some cognitive ability. But yet, there's not a cure. Certainly, this is an area where there's a lot of attention being done in research. So, if we're moving through our midlife, what can we expect? Now, although men don't experience the dramatic midlife hormonal change that women do, their primary sex hormone, testosterone, gradually declines by 30 to 40 percent between the ages of 48 and 70. The major changes that occur during a woman's middle years are more evident uh, than those of men. Women who enter into a perimenopause, the period from a woman's first irregular cycles of, uh, to menopause, um, and that ends at menopause. So perimenopause the average time frame for perimenopause is about five years, but it can range from two to eight years. Now, during this period of time of perimenopause, the egg cells in a woman's uh, ovaries start to die off at a faster rate. The pituitary gland churns out extra fo uh, folic stimulating hormone, FSH. These hormonal shifts trigger an array of symptoms, and if you've ever talk to somebody who's experiencing perimenopause or the more commonly the next stage menopause you'll be familiar menopause on the other hand is a complete cessation of menstrual periods for 12 consecutive months now this generally arrives at the age of 51 52 
dwindling levels of estrogen affect many aspects of a woman's health from her um, from her mouth to her skin to a drop in estrogen levels also causes hot flashes as well as a shriveling of the vaginal wall now women experiencing menopause face risks of heart disease stroke breast cancer now since estrogen and, and progestin Play, you know, they play a major role in the above health risks. For many years, hormone replacement therapy, or HRT, has been prescribed to ease the short-term symptoms of menopause. Recent research has challenged this practice. Now, in Canada, the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada advise that a combined HRT continue to be used to treat moderate to severe menopausal symptoms but that the lowest effective dose be used for short-term use. Now, many uh, postmenopausal women relieve symptoms and ha you know, have a relief of symptoms and lower risks of future health problems by exercising and strengthening bones and eating calcium-rich foods and supplements. Okay, now this is the end of part one. And we're going to look at the challenges, the, the challenges facing aging, sexuality and aging, and the use in technology and, and issues surrounding death and dying in part two. I hope this has been helpful. Please take it seriously in your, if you're in your 20s and your 30s or your 40s, now's the time to get yourself as healthy as you can as you enter into your older ages. All right, we'll see you later and we'll see you in part two. Bye now.